So 2011 has finally come to an end, and it has been a crazy year for those of us in the jailbreaking community. So now, it's time for the best jailbroken apps of 2011. What's up guys, my name is Dan from LimeRain.cc, and as mentioned before, in this video I will be showing you the best jailbroken tweaks and apps, etc., as chosen by you, the viewers. Now, the way this video is going to work, I'm just going to give you a brief synopsis of what this app does, so that way when you go ahead and download the app for yourself, you could explore more features of the app. These apps are listed in no chronological order, so let's get started. So the first app on this list is Zephyr. Now, Zephyr allows you to have multitasking gestures enabled on your iPod Touch or iPhone. Now, multitasking gestures are originally only available on the iPad 1 and iPad 2 using four fingers. However, with Zephyr, you can use one finger to bring up the multitasking bar as well as swipe between apps. So in the Zephyr settings here, you could tell Zephyr if you want to use specific gestures. For example, if I don't want to use the left and right edges, I don't have to. If I don't want to use the up from bottom gesture, I don't have to. But for now, I have both those on. And let me show you how it works. So if I take my finger and I swipe from the bottom like so, it brings up the multitasking tray, just like that. If I were to do the same with the left or right, it swipes between apps. So there's Cydia. If I swipe left, you're going to see settings come back up. Just like so, it works flawlessly. The next application is InfiniDoc. Now, InfiniDoc, like the name implies, allows you to put multiple applications in your dock without running out of space. So for example here, I can go ahead and wiggle the icons, and I can put a bunch of applications in my dock, and as you can see, they just keep sliding over. So when I put an application in, all I have to do is just swipe between the pages in the dock. Now, as you can see, it's just one fluid motion. So rather than the pages in the actual iOS springboard, you could actually just swipe back and forth and it's just one fluid motion. So it's very simple, very useful like that. That way you're not limited to the four icons in your dock. The next app up is Infini Folders. Now, like Infini Dock, this allows you to put multiple icons in one folder so you're not limited to just the 12 icons that ios gives you so here i could just keep putting in icons so i'm just going to put in a bunch of icons in one folder so if i go ahead and tap on this folder here you'll see i have 12 icons but if i scroll down now i have an extra four more and as you can see i can keep adding rows and rows and rows of icons it doesn't matter how many i add so this is great for example, if I have a bunch of games on my iPhone, I could keep putting in all these games into one folder rather than having to make multiple folders just for games. I could put them all in one folder and be done. The next app up is Barrel. Now Barrel lets you change the way it looks when you scroll between pages on your iOS springboard. So right now, as you can see, it looks like I just scrolled between my pages and it looks like the inside of a cube. So if I go into the Barrel settings here, I can go ahead and change the way that looks. So for example, I could change it to, let's say, Flippy. That sounds awesome. Go back to the home screen, and if I change, as you could see, it looks like it's flipping. So this is completely just graphical base, and just for fun, really. The next application is Adblocker. Now, like the name implies, Adblocker blocks the advertisements from certain web pages when you're browsing the web. Now, not only does it do that, but as long as you have this enabled, if you see here, we scroll down to the other apps, select, you could turn on Adblocker for specific apps. That way, for example, if you downloaded an app for free that has ads on it, you can go ahead and turn Adblocker on on that app, and Adblocker will block those ads for you. So for example, if you've got iAd coming up on Angry Birds because you downloaded the free version, you can go ahead and turn Adblocker on on that, and that will disable those ads, and that way it's like you paid for the full version. The next tweak up is a simple little graphical tweak called Sleep FX. Now what that simply does is it makes a cool little animation when you sleep and wake your device. So for example here, I have an effect set right now. It's on random, so it's just going to choose a random effect to sleep my device with. But if I go ahead and go into the settings here, I can go ahead and change that. So maybe I want the TV tube. So I'm going to change it to TV tube, and now I'm going to go ahead and sleep my device. And as you can see here, it does a little cool TV tube effect. If I go ahead and press the home button to turn it back on again, it's going to do that same effect to wake my device. Now, of course, that does cause a little bit of delay when accessing your device, but it's a cool little animation if you into that sort of thing. The next app up is IntelliScreen X. Now, this is pretty much sort of like an RSS feed directly on the lock screen of your device. So if I go ahead and lock my device here and then turn it back on, you could see here 
I could swipe left and then my Facebook feed would come up. But of course, that's not connected. Same with Twitter, but that's also not connected. If I swipe left again, I get a cool little Google thing, though. So I have a bunch of Google News here that I can scroll through. And as you could see, this is right on my lock screen. So I don't even have to unlock my device to access my crucial information. The next app is called Celeste. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to take Bluetooth data file transfers from any iPhone to any other device with Bluetooth. It doesn't have to be an iPhone. It could be some Android phone or something like that. It doesn't matter what device it is, Celeste will make it happen. The next app up was just recently released and it is called Spire. Spire allows you to use Siri with your iPhone 4, iPhone 3GS, iPad Touch 3G and 4G, and the iPad 1. So that means that if you don't have Siri on your device and you're jailbroken, you can have Siri. Now, of course, that means that you have to enable a proxy server to connect to your iPhone or iPod Touch or iPad in order for Siri to work. So once you install Spire from Cydia, all you have to do is enter in a proxy. If you're not sure how to do this, I made a video for you, and you could check it out right now using this annotation. Once you have done so, if you go ahead and press and hold the home button, you will see Siri will come up and you could start speaking to her. The next app up is called Sirius, and like Spire, it also has something to do with Siri. However, Spire enabled Siri in its full extent. This just enables the Siri dictation. Spire will not enable the Siri dictation for you, so you have to use Sirius to enable it separately. So if I go ahead and bring up my keyboard here, as you can plainly see, I have the Siri dictation button. So if we go ahead and press it, we could start talking. Siri will listen to what I'm saying. Then we go ahead and press done. As you can see, it'll think, and then it'll write it down on the screen. The next app is Call Bar. Now, if you notice, when you get a message or a notification or whatever, when you have notification setter, you'll see it just pops right down there and it doesn't interrupt what you're doing. However, when you get a call, it completely interrupts what you're doing and blocks out the entire screen until you either reject or answer it. Now, call bar takes what you get when you get an iOS 5 notification and puts it with the phone. So, for example here, if I were to get a call right now, it would only pop up in the top of the screen, just like it would when you get an iOS notification. So that doesn't interrupt what you're doing and you get a button here to either accept it or decline it. The next app up is Springtimize. Now Springtimize is pretty much a god of themes and tweaks for your springboard and anywhere graphical around your iPhone, iPod Touch, or iPad. This application allows you to choose different types of themes, different behaviors, and whatnot for your lock screen, for your home screen, for your status bar, your multitasking bar, etc. The list just keeps going on. So for example here, if I go ahead and go into the app switcher settings here, I could have a landscape app switcher. So if I go ahead and turn that on, go back, and then I respring, you will see you have a landscape app switcher. For example here, if I go into my lock screen settings here, I could hide the top bar if I want to. So if I go ahead and turn that on and respring, that will change. I can also have things such as custom animations, and I could even change the color of what happens to my device when I take a screenshot. So by default, it's set to white when I press the home and sleep buttons at the same time. But I could change that to a bunch of different colors. Purple, green, blue, cyan, whatever. I could change it to whatever color I want. That's how powerful this app is. Now, the best part about this is the certain capabilities that you could turn on and off. So if I go into the capability settings right here, if I turn that on and respring, I could have a bunch of different capabilities that I could choose to keep on or off on my device. For example, if I want battery percentage, if I want multitasking, HDR, even though this device isn't built for it, I can have it with this custom capabilities. I could also choose to have the app store on or off, battery percentage, GPS, the list just keeps going on what this app can do. This is by far one of the most powerful apps for tweaking your device graphically, under the hood, and all sorts of things like that. So these have been the best of the best jailbroken applications of 2011. Now, of course, there are plenty of other jailbroken applications that I did not cover, which are great. For example, Winterboard, Infiniboard, and uh, SP Settings, and all sorts of apps like that. But that is because those are apps that people already know about and that are more common. I wanted to cover the apps that people may not know about and want to learn about and download right now on Cydia. So this has been Dan from LimeRain.cc. I hope you have enjoyed this video and have a happy new year.